Okay. So, salam alaikum and welcome to another me speaking. I think I like this video and I think this is how my channel is going to go. Just me sitting down or standing up talking to you. I don't know why I feel like I have good opinions to share but maybe because I can be quite a talker or maybe because I, when I was a lot younger I wanted to be a journalist so this is a way to actualize my dream. Honestly I'm just trying to get my hijab to cooperate with me. I hope this is good enough for this video it's going to be why are diaspora distant from each other like why do we meet each other and we just frown or we don't want to say hi or we don't even want to relate but mind you we'll be the best friends to the white um or caucasian person or the arabic person or the asian uh, lady why are we like that why are we like that this is not to this anyone really but it's what i've noticed and it's what many other people I, i've noticed too like we can be quite distant from each other and if we are not judging each other because of um colorism or beauty reason or some kind of systemic racism or tribalism that we've perpetrated in our own societies it's something else i know from experience that my friends when i was in high school i mean there aren't a lot of nigerians in my high school anyway even we're not in the same class but my friends in high school they're everything but nigerian and even when i got into universities where like you meet a few other nigerians sometimes i'm not saying all but the first encounter is just like hostile sometimes it will be like a guy maybe you see them and you wave at them and they totally ignore you or you see them you want to say smile and they like look away and say ah calm down just to say hi just to say hi if you look in like the south asian community they stick together you know difference with each other and maybe some kind of microaggression and whatever that happens in that but at most time they're usually together it's like a close-knit circle collectivist kind of circle and that goes for like east asia as well or like the arabian I don't like Somalis. personally i feel that sometimes us as nigerians we are like We'll be walking side by side or we'll be walking opposite way like this and just see that kind of <laughs> distance what kind of disconnection are just like so apparent it's happened to me a considerable amount of times like but anyways why aren't we close as we would be or as we would have been if we are say if we we're in nigeria why aren't we close like that and honestly i'm guilty of this too and i don't know if it's a reaction from what i've experienced or if it's something deep within i'm not sure and one example that is quite recent for me is my roommate but if i tell you the story of how we came to living together i also had my doubts and i think from where i'm coming from i had a reason to have my doubts which is not related to her obviously but you know anyways whatever i had my doubts and obviously she had a doubt she was telling me that i was thinking that i'm not going to even now in nigerian saw me like be living together and even for me to when i was exploring to rent a new place to move in or to live i also had that sen sentiment that i don't want a nigerian honestly i don't know where it came from but I had that sentiment and when she told me and I, I told her as well that I had that but eventually I was going to it's what happened like Allah know that he will bring us together and he did so that's what happened friend wise as in like like a female to female friendship I feel like that's the first time that I will feel that way I'm not sure if it's because I had a bad experience from where I was moving from because I was writing you know it's a long story but anyway 
I don't know if because of that experience, that bad experience that I had, that was why I reacted that way. I'm not sure. But it was the first time that I would have like, that kind of deep uh, sentiment. Emotional. No, I don't want to live with it. Mind you, where I was moving from, the people were not Nigerian. They're not even African. But regardless, why are diaspora and why Nigerians usually pull away from each other? Do we have ego? And if we do, we need to like break this. Like it's not it's not cool. Here is the thing: if you can't say hi, if you can't be cordial with the other person, but don't be looking down on other person, or don't be looking down on them, or don't be walking by, and immediately they want to give you a smile, you look away. Like, who do you think you are? It's because people see you. That's why they want they acknowledge you to give you a smile or to even say hi. Who do you think you are? Don't be like walking by and they wave at you and you immediately use that opportunity to look away or to discount them or whatever. Because trust me, the next time they see you, they will not give you that acknowledgement. And yes, you might be like saying, hey, I don't need the acknowledgement for you, which brings me back to my point. Who do you think you are? But what caused this uh, distance anyway? Sometimes I feel like the colorism, beautyism, like, oh, <laughs> she's not even that fine. Could you fine? You know, that kind of thing. Like, people have situations where, you know, like a, a person, they be sitting in a group, but maybe they are with their Caucasian or their Arabian or other friends like that. And you come around them, and immediately in their friends like that, and their other friends that are not immediately like your kind of skin tone or whatever, they start acting differently at or acting dismissive of you. Like say, mm, let me come and go in. I've had those kind of experiences. So like, calm down. Who do you think you are? Or sometimes you meet people like, and they frown like, calm down. You haven't even smiled. But they already, already have a sentiment and they're already frowning. And don't come at me and be like, say maybe they're having a bad day. No. If you have a good eyesight and that person is like two steps away from you, now they are talking or immediately you look up and they kind of look away. Calm down. Even if you are not cordial, we just met. Calm down. Eh? Eh, wale. Bring it. Eggs or kale. Step down, get off your high horse, kilo shelly. I feel so bad to mention it. <laughs> okay, but don't get me wrong, it's not all people and it's not all Nigerians that do this. But I've seen like a, consider a considerable amount of us kind of had that sentiment or kind of have that, I don't know, negations with each other. I want to point out to the fact that. I made a few of Nigerian friends even when I was in university. While I understand that you might not always be people spec, you might not always meet eye to eye with people. But honestly, when something like this is constant, if you meet a person or if you meet a people over and over and over again, and they always like have that kind of um, attitude towards you, Sometimes you kind of start wondering that, is it you, is it them, is it this way? But from what I have seen or from what I've heard, it seems like sometimes in diaspora, we seem to negate each other. Maybe it's out of jealousy, envy, or the fact that even sometimes black people don't want to hang around each other. I have no idea why. I don't know. So maybe it is part of the environment that we are in and we just need to be cautious or we just need to bring ourselves back that even though we are in this environment that obviously slavery and racism and black hate, whatever, is deep and entrenched in the society, it doesn't warrant, it doesn't equate, and it doesn't validate that we should negate each other to the point that even a smile is hard. 
because here is another thing if i see another black person i probably will start guessing like are they nigerian are they ghanaian are they cameroon are they from ethiopia are they from somalia i started thinking but eventually sometimes you can guess that oh i think that person is somali i think that person is ethiopian or Eritrean or this kind of stuff and sometimes you can guess that oh that person is nigerian if a nigerian see me now they might say oh i think that person is nigerian i'm not going to say i i'm not going to whatever just in case that i don't want them to start talking to me or start relating like you know so sometimes i feel like as a black person we negate one another in that way because of the systemic issues and problems like racism that's already deep and entrenched in the society that we find ourselves in you know i mean like what happens to black guys not wanting to date black girls because they want a fairer skin tone kind of girl, girls it comes from that racism and colorism and slave trade kind of mentality it is it, it stems from that and on a friendship level i feel like it's also stem from that we all have our own unique experience and honestly i would tell you that it wasn't until university that i actually made a couple of nigerian friends and it's not that i haven't met nigerians in my other schools before i remember when i first arrived in canada i was very bubbly i remember one time we were in the bus going home and I actually spoke my language. I was like 13 and I, I spoke my language. I got like a few looks here and there, even from like the white uh, kids that were on the bus with us. And my sister was like, what is wrong with this village girl? And even like the other Nigerians at the time, I was like, what is wrong with her? But that was just me. I spoke my language. Deal with it. And that's the kind of person that I am. Um, and honestly, I could tell you there are many times that I walk past these same people that I was with and they literally ignore you. And it's not like even it wasn't intentional. It was intentional. Like, how can you be talking to me yesterday? And me, I just see you today and want to say hi or say hello. How are you doing? And you completely ignore me. Maybe because you feel like you don't want to let people know that we talk or you know this bush big girl or whatever whatever the reason was i didn't vibe with it i didn't like it it was like like what's the reason is it is it you or is it because you also don't want your white friends or your other friends to know that you know this bush <laughs> anyways that's how this kind of thing sometimes feels it wasn't until university that I actually made a couple of Nigerian friends. And the friends that I made then, they are the kind of friends that also wanted to be friends with me. They are not like, she's not as pretty as us. This kind of thing happened. You have those cohorts that be like, say, oh, she's not as pretty as us, or she's not as pretty as me. And that cohort exists. But the friends that I eventually made in university, Nigerian friends, they are friends that also wanted to be friends with me. I was also friends with them, which is a breath of fresh air, considering that I just want to relate to people. Like, you know, have that kind of human connection with people. I remember one time when I first moved down to Canada, it was my first high school. I was in grade nine then. And I was sitting by myself, you saying, I didn't know where my sister was. She was probably like with her new friends, but I didn't know where she was. And this girl, she was a Nigerian. The way the girl just came to me and spoke to me, I will always remember. This girl, she spoke our, our language to me. It's so interesting how like, sometimes like, if you are a new like, immigrant, people assume that maybe you don't know how to speak English. But I could also understand English. But she was with her friends and she saw me sitting by myself. She was like, oh, why are you sitting by yourself? I was like, oh. I, I didn't even know how to answer because I was surprised that she actually took a second to actually speak to me. I think it was a month in Canada then and I was just sitting by this window. I was looking outside and I 
and I could literally remember. This is another traumatic experience I'm talking about. Like, like someone I've been an immigrant is traumatic. Anyway, that time I was sitting by the window and I was looking like you being like in a trance, and I was thinking that literally last month, like literally last month, I was in Nigeria in SS1 on my seat probably like taking notes or something like that in my class and like it's like that though that moment deja vu like you and like the the shift but this girl stopped she was with her white girlfriends and she stopped and it just that that kind of interaction that kind of sentiment you know acknowledgement that you see people when you acknowledge them that's the kind of thing that i'm talking about and this girl didn't think that oh i don't want her people or i don't want my friends to know that i know this bush lady or that i'm speaking with this girl or that i'm speaking my language to her mind you this is in high school like the high school was big and there's probably 10 black people in that school so with me and her there's other maybe like eight black people in the whole school and the other people are like white so imagine that kind of environment that kind of um, difference that's very highlighted. So this girl, she's tall, it just melts me. Every time I remember that experience, it just melts me. And that's kind of thing that I'm referencing to, like that acknowledgement. It might sound odd that I'm putting it this way, but you see some people with their friends, whether it's other people from the, another tribe, culture or whatever. If the difference is so highlighted, that is the exact moment that they will completely ignore you. But this girl didn't do that. Compared to other reactions that I've gotten so far during that beginning year of my life in Canada. So it's quite warming, heartwarming. And you acknowledge people. You don't look down on people. Because you never know where you might find them or see them tomorrow. Every time I remember my beginning years in Canada, it's always my highlights. It's always, always, always my highlights. And that moment, it really shows who people are. Imagine me, I was like in a trance, thinking about last month that I was in Nigeria with my friends and all that. And this girl stopped and like, say hi, why are you sitting alone? Why are you sitting alone? That's what I'm talking about. The yeah, boy diasporas can relate to each other. Like, honestly, different kind of reasons. Say systemic reason, say colorism, say beauty reason, say like, environments that have this history that pitches black people against each other. And it's still perpetrated in the society. Whether we realize it consciously or unconsciously, it's still there. And we need to realize that as a people, even if we don't want to stick together, we still want to respect and acknowledge one another in a way, in ways, in however little you can, even just smiling or even just saying hi. If you don't want to talk to them, blatantly, don't blatantly see people or don't blatantly look down on people or people shouldn't blatantly look at you. And your first reaction to them is to frown or to dismiss. So warranted, you might be going through a lot. Or warranted, you might be going through bad times. I think I'm getting my, my point across when I say that. You can know the difference when people are being blatantly, being dismissive in that sense. You can see that. And, and even years later, when I met this girl again, I was the first to say, Salam Alaikum, how are you doing? I did not forget that and I never forgot that. Call me emotional person, but that's the way I say it. I, I don't think, unless that I'm in a bad mood or whatever kind of thing, if you smile at me, I'll mostly or I'll probably smile back. But I don't think I will be like, you know, I don't think I will be like that hopefully i'm not i hope i'm not but most often i hope that i've always smile at people whether they are from my nigerian country or not i think i've always just smile and yeah 
don't get me wrong, I feel like it's what happens a lot in Nigerians, so I'm among Nigerians a lot. If I haven't experienced this, or if I haven't felt this, I wouldn't be saying this. Or perhaps, perhaps, in another place, the situation is different. But honestly, I feel like as we grow older, things to become understanding. Or we will tend to become more more calm in how we approach each other. This experience that I'm saying was like 15 years ago. But 15 years ago, even though it's quite recent, it's still a long time ago. And even people that I don't even think that I will be talking to today, I'm actually quite friends with them. So I always wonder what happened back then. Why weren't we friends? But I would say that even back then, especially when I first um, came to Canada, there's always this story that you hear that, oh, some advice that you hear from people that, oh, if you're working in a store or something like that, and if you two are from same country, don't be talking in your language to each other, because if all those managers or your bosses know, they might fire you, they might fire the other person. You don't want to be too familiar with them, you might get fired. So I think that that was how like, these negations started uh, being perpetrated in us. Whereas I have seen and I've worked in so many other places where like, Arabian they're just talking to each other and they're like going home together and like, all these other immigrants from other countries like they they relate, they speak their language. They, but when it comes to like, no. Don't do it all. If they hear you, if your manager knows, they will. Ah. But anyways, if you know any other reason why diaspora and so why Nigerian diaspora tend to negate each other or tend to negate one another, let me know. Let me know. I've shared my points and I bet there are more but don't get me wrong there are plausible reasons that people tend to negate each other sometimes but in terms of familiarity and people only take this look at you and you frown or people just want to say hi and you look away or you intentionally dismiss them just know that you are no more than the other person and today they are just acknowledging you. A smile is a charity. If someone is so kind enough to stop and acknowledge you, or to just simply say hi, or to just simply smile at you, and you feel like that's the right time to look away, to look down on them, or whatever. Like I said, it's today, tomorrow. You might just need something like that, and you won't find it anywhere. Or they won't give it to you because of how you treated them or how you respond to them. So my point, just be mindful. Smile. It's charity. They say it takes less muscle to smile than to frown. So my relations, come on. Come on. Come on. And trust me, I'm not just saying this because I have something to say, but it's what I have seen, it's what I have experienced. And for me, that is always so bubbly. Like, I remember my old high school, the bus driver used to call me smiley. Like the bus driver, and this is what like maybe like a month or two months in Canada, <laughs> I entered the bus and he used to say, oh, smiley. <laughs> I swear, the, the bus driver would call me smiley. And another highlight for me, and I guess I'm just that kind of person. I laugh a lot, I smile a lot. I always remember that too. And if someone acknowledges you like that, it's only human and it's only humane to acknowledge them back. Whether by saying hi or smile or just simply calm and nod and just walk away. Regardless of if they're from your country or your race or your tribe or whatever innuendance you want to apply to this, regardless of that. Because you might not have that opportunity, however small, or you might not get that kind of reaction tomorrow. Especially if you dismiss them. 
But if they are genuine, if you, if they are a very cool individual and they keep smiling at you every time they meet you, then then they keep smiling at you until you smile back. That's my point. It's only humane. It's only humane, and that's just it. We don't all have it all. We don't all know it all. And we are all in progress. But if someone took a time to stop, or even not to stop, but smile and wave and nod at you, it is only humane. I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that maybe you are from their country, or from their tribe, or they want to associate with you, or they want to be friends with you. Or even so, it might be the last time that you see the person or it might be the last time that they see you or whatever I should stop being poetic you know I'm not gonna stop being poetic you know what I actually want to do my videos one day or maybe my vlog and then read my poems or put my poems as background voice I want to try that for a couple of my videos but obviously it's not going to be this kind of sit and talk video it's only going to be a vlog I'll see how that goes. Maybe once in a while I'll do that. But regardless, and anyways, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for. Salam alaikum. I don't. Do I say salam alaikum? Why do I feel like I always forget to say salam alaikum at the beginning of my video and then I remember at the end I'm like, sorry, salam alaikum. It's Aisha. Go click the next button somewhere over here, anywhere, or go to my channel and watch other videos. Wait, anyway. And again, smile, it's charity, it takes less muscle, and yeah. Anyways, I wasn't going to do this, but since I'm already here and I finished my video that I was going to do, it's like, you know what, let me just show you where I'm at. I'm actually renting at a motel, and here, I'll give you a quick tour. I see like in Instagram as YouTube I do this, so I'm going to give you a quick tour too. So, so obviously, my computer, my laptop, all this, my tripod, have all this. I brought my food because I was staying here for a few days. I cooked some rice and spaghetti, so I brought them. And obviously, this is the sink and this is the washroom. Very simple. Me, I don't mind though. You might say that it's not luxury. I don't mind though, at least I get somewhere to stay. And that's for me, you hear me? That's what I'm at. I get somewhere to stay. And I'll end your life.